come on and answer some questions I had last week about soy isoflavones and whether it's safe to take soy because a few people have been saying that they've seen some controversial information to say that it may not be a good idea and they're wondering whether they should be consuming it or not. So I first heard about soy isoflavones, I think I saw, saw the first research in 1990. And there were a group of experts, doctors in Australia who got together and they put a group of women on soy and some other isoflavones like flax seeds and red clover. And they found that they could bring about the same changes in the lining of the vagina as women who were taking HRT. So that was when I first pricked my ears up and thought, well, this has to be interesting, and obviously watch that space and followed the research that was done over a number of years. And there have been lots and lots and lots of studies done. In fact, um, more recently, there was an analysis of 19 different studies looking at the benefits of isoflavones and the different effects that they have on our health. So before I get into all the effects they have on our health, I should also say that there is, a, to some degree, an anti-soil lobby. And that's, I think, why sometimes we see these negative things in the press. And I think that, um, I, I mean, I, I know that there has been some legal battles between the dairy industry and the soy industry over the years. And I would imagine that if lots of women switch to soy rather than dairy, which we're not suggesting that they do, um, but to include soy as well as dairy is a good idea. Um, because the health benefits really outweigh anything else. So I used to do a lot of work for, for Woman's Hour as their regular nutritionist. And I got a phone call one day to say that they were doing a programme the following day on a report that had been published by some researchers at Guy's University on the negative effect of soya. And they were purporting that it was equivalent to rat poison. I think that was probably going to be the headline in the newspapers the following day. So it was a bit alarming. Um, I got in touch with one of the professors in America who is a real expert in this area, Mark Messina, and I sent him the information that they'd sent me to ask him if he could help me to interpret the research because I really wanted to be uh, fully informed before I went on this program to talk with the presenter and also the researcher from Guy's University about the results. So he explained to me exactly what the research entailed and how to interpret the results. And he also told me that he suspected that the animals in this study, I think they were rats, had actually been given a lot more isoflavones than a human being would be given. And he asked me to ask the researchers the first question, how much, and told me how to calculate it. So I got there early and so did the researcher and we sat in the green room and had a conversation and I asked her how much these ruts had been given and it turned out they'd been given 200 more than the permitted amount of isoflavones than a human could absorb or should absorb. And obviously that's why it had a disastrous effect on these animals. So taken out of isolation, obviously during the programme, I mentioned that and the controversy was over and done with and the, the media didn't go to print on that subject because there was really, it, it's like comparing apples with bananas and it just didn't equate at all. And certainly if you look at Asian communities and how they've consumed isoflavones for so many hundreds of years or thousands of years, they have half the incidence of oestrogen dependent cancer and until they started consuming a western diet they didn't even have a term for menopause in their language. So it's really important to understand that consuming isoflavones little and often will help to fill the receptor sites within your body and they help to fool the brain into thinking that you've got normal circulating oestrogen again. In my new book, Beat Menopause the Natural Way, in chapter 7, there's a whole section on the benefits of isoflavones. I talk a bit about the controversy and I've also got in the reference, medical reference section at the back of the book, I've got all the up-to-date references and some of them were published as recently as this year. So please feel free to have a look at that and you can set your mind at rest. You can certainly consume naturally occurring oestrogen. You want to aim to have about 100 milligrams of isoflavones a day. 
and you want to take them little and often so that you satisfy the needs of the oestrogen receptor sites. But obviously you need to be doing this along with lots of other things to help quell your symptoms at the time of the perimenopause and the menopause. So I'll be talking more about that and general ways to help with other symptoms in a separate film. But I just wanted to answer the question specifically about isoflavones and point you in the direction of chapter 7 in the new book. Bye-bye for now.